So Fossil Bot is a Twitch bot that can do amazing things. It's my favorite bot. I've done a video before on how to auto shout out your friends with this bot. And it also has the best Twitch malware detection I've ever seen that will swat those bots that come in your chat quicker than anything. So what we're going to do today, as I've already shown Fossil Bot setup, they're actually moving to a version 2.0. They just opened up the beta for everyone. They are going to be migrating to version two really soon. So if you're already using Fossil Bot from one of the other videos, I recommend you go ahead and get migrated. Or if you are doing this for the first time looking into Fossil Bot, let's go ahead and set it up from scratch. This is the old dashboard. This is old where you just go to fossilbot.com. And we can look through and I've already got my commands here and keywords where we set up the auto shout outs and timers and stuff like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to beta.fossilbot.com. And then whenever I go here, I just have like a pl plain little pink login button. So click login. Boom. So now we have the new beta dashboard. So what we're going to do, first things first, if you already use Falsabot from one of the other videos or something else, to integrate, you'll notice when you first go and look, it's completely blank. But what we want to do is go to integrations. And then if you already have it set up, you'll see an import from Falsabot version one. So we did that by clicking on integrations and then we'll connect, import old settings. So let's go ahead and import after that disclaimer. Let's go and see what moved over. Here's all my default commands that I had added in there. Default for me, custom commands. So it looks like all of those made it. And you do have the actual default commands that are still here. The ones I disabled, it had already disabled. Looks like all of that moved over just fine. Go to keywords, keywords moved over too. So let's go ahead and cover this keywords for anyone that's not familiar. I created a new command, so I do SO-all is what I named it. It doesn't really matter what you name it, but this was, is the auto shout out command for friends and people that I know that stream. So what I've done here is you'll go, here's this value right here. And that's not what this video is about. I have a video that covers this. You go down here, conditions enabled, enabled when stream is online, enabled when stream is offline. That just let me test it out. And different roles i just by default i added all the roles just let it do that do you have a cooldown now the way this auto shout out command works i added this 18,000 second cooldown and i think it's roughly five hours after you've got the cooldown set we go down here to response type we're going to set this to say print the message normally don't target the user or anything and the target is username use only the username when parsing the keyword that is the key to this. So whenever it sees their username, it's not actually reading their text. This is actually reading the username itself, which is one thing I haven't seen any other bots, you know, do for a trigger. We're using this for the trigger. So then in each one of those, we do need to add a phrase. So the way you'll add a phrase is we'll just go ahead and add a phrase group and you'll type in whatever the username is. So if we're doing username, Press enter afterward. Make sure you press enter afterward so that it shows blue. If it doesn't, it's not gonna stick. So let's close that out. You will need to do a different phrase group for each username you want to have auto shouted out because it's gonna look for all triggers in this phrase group. So if you do your friend's username and then add another username, what it's gonna do is look for combinations of all of those. So for example, if I put two usernames in this field and just keep adding, it's only going to auto shout out if it sees all of those usernames in this, which isn't going to work. So it can get a little messy depending on how many you have, but it's a super handy tool. And we'll just click save, which we haven't made any changes there. That's how you do. Now you can do all kinds of creative things with keywords. They're super handy. I have a little one here for an example, Friday. And the bot literally just responds, Fridays are the best. Whenever someone mentions the word Friday or mentions the word Friday or any variant of that, that you want to add in there. And again, you'll do that with different phrase group lines for each new one that you want to be a trigger. So I've got a 15 second cooldown. You can set this 
however you want. Here's where you go. It'll be say you just want them to print it in chat. Now this will actually look in to the message. So use only message content when parsing for the keywords. So it's going to read everything in their message. It doesn't have to be a command. That's the beauty of keywords. It doesn't have to be, you know, exclamation mark, whatever. Just if they mention the word anywhere, that's going to trigger. Super handy tool. Next, we do have timers, just like any other. I've just got the one timer in here right now. I'll go ahead and show you how. There's a blue button up here to create a new timer. And I'll just go and edit to view one of my timers that I have. We'll name the timer there. You can enable or disable it. Enable when stream is offline or not. Enable only when it's online. I've currently got this one set to a 22 minute interval. There is an offline interval set too, but that's only used if you enable that. Minimum lines, that's a minimum number of lines people have had to have chatted. So if you've got a chat that's not active at all, and it's literally no one talking, you probably don't want that as zero, or you're just gonna see the chat bot just, you know, every 22 minutes, the only thing in your chat will be a chat bot. Set that accordingly. Also bot can iterate through your custom commands per timer interval, instead of you having to write out unique messages each time. Add a command. So these are the commands that will rotate through. So for example, you have an exclamation mark YouTube command. And if anyone types exclamation mark YouTube in your chat and it has a link to your YouTube channel, you'll add that here. So you'll just add the command. You don't have to type all that out manually. You just type whatever your command is and press enter and it'll add it as a blue box. Remember in this interface, unless it's showing up as a blue box, it hasn't been added because you can type things and then go away and then it's not going to be there. So just remember to press enter after you type whatever the command is you want to add. You can add multiple and it will naturally rotate through the, for this example, I have two separate commands and you can just keep adding. And as this example is a 22 minute interval. So it's just going to naturally progress one at a time. So every 22 minutes, it'll fire off the first command. Then the next 22 minutes come by, it's going to get this next command. And if you have a command after that, it'll just keep working through the list. When it gets to the end of the list, it'll start back over from the beginning. So in this example, it just alternates back and forth. Here's another cool feature. You can have it only do per game category. This is so cool. I don't, this may be a new feature. So you can create this command. Let's say you have timers specifically for this game type. Like say I'm streaming Final Fantasy 14 and you've got how to guides or something. You could set up timers to advertise those guides ever so often. And you can set add a game and only add by game category for Twitch. Then if you do a different game, let's say ESO or something, you don't necessarily want your Final Fantasy 14 guide timers going through. And you could also create a duplicate timer of this. Let's say you do Elder Scrolls Online or Call of Duty or anything. And you can specify specific timer sets per game. You can also go to title keywords. I'm seeing this too. You can ensure timers are only emitted when certain keywords exist in your Twitch title. So block terms is where we'll go just by default. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I don't use it a lot because our spam filters are so good. I don't have to, but if you wanted to just manually block individual words that you're having issues with or something in chat, you can do so here. Create button is always on the right right there for creating things. Next section, one of my favorites is spam. So of course, these are pretty straightforward. You've got all your settings for your caps filter, emails filters, italics filters. I'm not real picky about that stuff, but you can go in here, edit. You've got tons of options. You can look at better ETV options, Frank or Face Z. You can get like really detailed with, you know, the specifics you're having issues with, how you handle repeat offenders, the links filter. So I definitely have this on the way this works and the way a lot of people set these things up, even without Fossilbot, is you'll go ahead and enable links in chat on the Twitch side and then use your bot to manage who can actually post a link. This is just a fairly simple setup right here. All I do for mine, if you're a subscriber, you can post links. If you're not a subscriber, a mod or myself can do exclamation mark permit and whatever the username is in chat. And then it gives them, I believe a two minute window 
for anyone else to be able to post a link though. But that keeps that under control. It also helps with spam that comes in, which is, that's nothing incredibly special. A lot of bots can do that part. Um, we also have enable clips filtering. So you can block clips, just clips. You can block just clips from other channels. You can permit clips for your channel. So if even if someone doesn't have rights to post, you know, any kind of just random link, you can still allow this to where they can post links to clips from your channel that they've made or other people have made. So that's really handy the amount of control you have in this. So I noticed one of my favorite features wasn't auto imported whenever I did this. And that's my malware links filter, which is the, the malware bot filter, which is amazing. I want to create. Now under this section, you'll see by default, there's already pre-made malware link filter. You definitely want to add that. Now it already has these pre-populated, the settings. You don't have to change anything here. This is really cool. Have known malicious links automatically removed from chat. There's a list that's managed by the Fossilbot team for you. This is my favorite, favorite feature of all time that this bot does. Second to the auto shout out. You can accept all the defaults you can go through here. I haven't ever bothered changing any of these default settings. It just works out of the box. There should be no reason why you need, you know, an exclusion for your mods even for this because it's literally going to detect known malware links and it's really smart. It doesn't have to be just a link. It can be, you know, they do the weird spacing and they'll add a random period here just so that Twitch can't detect it as a link. It catches all that too. The only thing, if you get hit a ton, you may want to turn off enable announcement messages. If you're tired of seeing false about saying, Hey, block this malware link. If you get so much of that you're sick of it, then you can turn that off. But me personally in my chat, we actually like watching Fossilbot swat the occasional you know, malware bot that comes in. We're just gonna save that. Another potentially cool feature in the future is Tweet Tracker. Now, the reason I say in the future, so what this does is you can click on Tweet Tracker and track new user. So you'll do a username. Let's say there is a Twitter account for a game developer and it posts whenever a game server is offline. So what this will do is it will follow those and whenever there's a tweet made from that account, it will post it in your Twitch chat. Now that's super handy. Imagine if there's a server outage and people are like, I uh, can't get connected, what's going on? Well, people hanging out in your chat can see if they tweet an offline notice or a maintenance notice, it'll come into your Twitch chat. So it's super handy. The problem with this is currently it still does not have support for filtering replies. So the problem is if you have a Twitter account, for example, Bethesda support or something like that, that tweets things like that, it'll come into your chat. But if they also use that account to reply to, you know, individual user complaints or help them troubleshoot, you're going to get every single tweet, every single reply, everything they make is going to come in your Twitch chat. So you're, probably not going to want to turn this on. Now, if you're following a game that actually has a dedicated status, for example, literally all they use that account for is tweeting status updates and they don't use it to reply to other users or anything else. This will be fine. Just know that if you set this up in its current form, it does not filter out replies. It has been mentioned that they're working on that for the future and then chat alerts. So this is pretty straightforward. If you're using stream elements bot, for example, you can use multiple bots with Twitch. You just don't want to have overlap or you have multiple bots doing the same thing. So if you want fossil bot to handle this, it has some default variables and you, you edit from there. I've already edited this for my own. So you can do subscription alerts, resubscription alerts, you know, gift a sub, mass gift sub, subscription alerts. You can go through all that. It's pretty straightforward. Of note, if you are using stream elements alerts like I am, it does not need stream elements chatbot in your chat to be able to detect that. Those alerts still work via the Twitch API. So you don't even need it. I don't even have stream elements chatbot in my chat because it's just so much easier for me to manage just one bot for everything. One thing we definitely want to make sure if you haven't already done, let's go back to dashboard. And you want to click join channel. We just want to make sure Fossilbot has joined the channel. 
if you haven't used Fossilbot before or you haven't already done this, be sure to go in and make Fossilbot a mod. Just forward slash mod Fossilbot in your Twitch chat. Let me go ahead and hide my camera here so we can show roles down here in the final section. If you have other people you want to allow access to get in here and manage your bot for you, set up your commands, this is where you'll do that. It's pretty straightforward. Just click create and then you'll add the roles there. So I hope this has been helpful for you. It's super handy. If you have any questions, comments, just let me know in the comment section below. You can usually catch me live on Twitch. Sometimes I toy with streaming on Classic Caleb TV, the YouTube channel. Have a good day.